Yes, Lisa asked the question if you will get the recording. Yes, you will get the recording from tonight's webinar. I will email it out to everyone that signs up. So greetings and hello once again and welcome to the webinar. This is Tony Coleman Brown and I'm going to be your host for tonight. Usually when I do a long webinar, I go into my whole entire background and let you guys know why I'm qualified to teach and train this information. But because this is really almost, um, I should say, a continuation of a live training that we had this past Saturday. So what I would like to do to save a lot of time is to kind of jump right in. But before... Before we just jump right into the presentation and everything, I'm just going to give a little backdrop. Basically, Kevin, Keith and Kevin came to me and approached me. They found out about my small business boot camp for women. They decided to sign up as a vendor. And then from there, that's where the story began. They found out a little bit about my background. They found out that I had a lot of technical skills as it relates to generating leads. They found out that I was able to reach three Diamond National Vice President in the last company that I was with because of the fact that I was able to create lead capital your pages and teach my team how to do the same. So they basically asked me to come and teach their team members as well as some other individuals that decided to attend the training how to generate leads for their business and it's Inspire Network and I'm so excited. I know we have some Inspire Network uh, reps on the phone as well as we have some other people from other network marketing companies on the phone. So I was excited to be able to go and sit with them live and I know that they got a lot of value out of the information that I shared because what I did was I took them step by step and I showed them how to set up their professional email marketing software, how to create lead pages using ClickFunnels. And then once we had our lead pages set up, I taught them how to go and generate ads with Facebook. But there was a lot of information that I was not able to cover in that course as it relates to lead generation on Facebook, on Instagram, and YouTube. And that's what I want to cover tonight. So I have a couple of slides. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to go through some of these slides, but then what we're going to do is we're going to pop over to Facebook, we're going to pop over into Instagram, but Instagram, I have to tell you that we're not going to be able to do a lot of the things that I want to do on Instagram because Instagram is really a phone app and a lot of the posting and a lot of the live training that you would do is you would pretty much just pull out your phone and then start taking action. But based upon the slides that I have here as it relates to Instagram, you'll be able to do a lot of that while I'm going through the slides, you'll be able to do a lot of the things that I'm talking about on your phone live right now because of the fact that most of you, I can tell you right now, probably have your Instagram um, account set up wrong because you probably don't have your account set up so that people can contact you, email you, or call you. You probably don't have them set up as business accounts. One of the things I found out at the event was that a lot of people didn't have fan pages. So I knew that people weren't advertising on Facebook because you have to have a fan page in order to advertise on Facebook. And we're going to talk about YouTube, and I'm going to show you some YouTube strategies that you can use as well. But I'm just going to jump right in, and we're going to do this deep dive, dive into Facebook. Um, so basically... When you are marketing on Facebook, oh, and the other thing, I would be remiss if I didn't say that there was someone, um, Sean Robinson, I believe, who attended the event this past weekend. And one of the things that he said was based upon the principles that I taught over the weekend, he was able to go and generate 11 leads on Facebook. So I thought that that was pretty, pretty good right there. So with this um, Facebook training, we're going to talk about how to create our first ad. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Facebook retargeting pixel. I'm going to show you how to um, build some custom audiences. 
and we're going to talk a little bit about how to post on Facebook so that you can get engagement, so that you can get people to start commenting on your posts. And then we're going to talk a little bit about a software tool called Credit Response that will allow you to automate your responses on Facebook which is pretty cool because you can have multiple conversations going on while you are not even on Facebook when people begin to comment on your post. And that's pretty powerful. So um, like I said, get comfortable, get your, you know, your pen and your pad, and um, we're, we're about to jump right in. So basically, when you go to Facebook, you're going to see when you're ready to create an ad, you're going to see um, the first thing that's going to pop up is it's going to ask you what are some of your marketing objectives. And you are going to have to really think about what your objectives are on Facebook before you even go and get started with creating ads. Because one of the things that I said over the weekend, and this is very true, is that you really want to get your marketing started be on paper first before you even go to create your ad. So some of the types of ads you can create is like this kind of carousel ad where you will have multiple images on your ad. And some of the other things that you can do on Facebook is you can update your timeline covers and you can change your call to action buttons. And I'm going to show you how to do that. And I'm just, I just want to run through some of the slides. And I'm going to show you how to boost some of your posts so that you can reach more people. And then we're going to talk about, you know, going live, doing Facebook Lives. And, you know, because video is just everything on Facebook today. So one of the first things I want to do is I want to log on to Facebook. Because I can tell you guys right now that there are so many different ways that you can take advantage of Facebook. And one of the main reasons why most people love Facebook is because they love to advertise on Facebook. It's because you can target people by not only demographics, because demographic information is really important, but you can also target people by psychographics. Now, psychographics is even more important because it delves deeper into a person's psyche. So basically, you can do a deep dive into what people are interested in. So you can do a deep dive as it relates to um, music interests. You could do a deep dive whether people are interested in weight loss um, because if you look on Facebook, you name it and every brand is on here. Um, over the weekend when we did our ads and I showed the team how to create ads on Facebook, we did it based upon People who were interested in my doll, and my doll is something that people use to relieve cramps. We did it based on people that were interested in Tampax. And you could do it based upon people that are interested in Kotex. You can also create ads based upon people's behavior, whether or not they buy online. You can also uh, do ads targeting uh, people, whether a person has an iPhone or a Samsung. And I don't know whether or not many of you know, but people who have iPhones are buyers. They spend almost three times more money than people that have Samsung phones, even though there are more Samsung phones out there. Than they are. Uh oh, somebody dropped something. But <laughs> there are more Samsung phones out there than there are iPhones. Um, but iPhone users tend to be buyers. So the first thing you need to know is that when you are advertising on Facebook, you need to have a fan page. So a fan page is a page that's related to your business. So I have several fan pages. One of my fan pages is the Small Business Bootcamp for Women. So um, 
let's go over to the Small Business Bootcamp for Women fan page so you can take a look. And every time you have a fan page, Facebook will send you all types of messages asking you, you know, if you want to have a different look, if you want to get your... I tell people oftentimes is that you must, must, must have a fan page for your business, even if you're in network marketing, especially if you're in network marketing, you need a fan page for your business. And you can either brand yourself or you can brand a product, or even better, you can brand your team. And you can begin to run ads using your fan page. What I really like about fan pages now, which is something new, is that on your fan page, you can come over and create it. And I'm going to show you how to create the fan page. But you can change your cover, and your cover can be a video or it can be an image. You can also update your profile picture, and your profile picture could be um, it could be a regular picture, or you can use a banner that promotes your event. So every time you're communicating now, instead of people seeing your profile picture, they'll see the picture or banner related to your event. And then you can also come over here and you can um, change the sign up page. You can change this button. So you can edit this button so that it can actually go to a specific website. And for this one, it's going to the Small Business Bootcamp for Women. But you have a ton of other options. So if you click on other options, you can see you can get people to book your services. And these are some of the buttons that you can use. Book now, request time, start an order. Or if you want people to get in touch with you, these are some of the other buttons that you can use. Call now, contact us, send a message, or sign up. Uh, under learn more, you can get watch the video or learn more, right? So under make a purchase or donation, you can see the shop now button or see offers. Or if you have an app, you can get somebody to use the app or play the game. So there are a ton of different options that you can use for the call to action button. But one of the things that I believe that people should do that they're not doing now is they should probably spend a little bit more time um, utilizing their call to action button, which is this button here with their timeline cover and connecting the two with promotions. So now there's the questions from Sophia, Sophia Brown. She wants to know, how is a fan page different from a business page? Well, a business page and a fan page, those are two terms that are used synonymously. So I say, you know, a fan page and a business page, page is, they're kind of the same thing. So that's just create, when you create a page for your business, that's creating a fan page for your business. So people, people tend to use the two terms synonymously. So, um, you know, they're interchangeable. But how you create a fan page is pretty simple. You can come over to uh, the home area, right? And then if you scroll down along the left navigation bar, all you have to do is click on this button page and it will take you to the option to create a fan page. And then you can create a page that's a local business. It could be about your company. It could be about a brand or a product. It could be about a cause or a community. Um, or related to entertainment, if you're branding yourself, I would suggest that you create a page related to a public figure, right? And then use your name. So you have to have a fan page in order to run ads. I'm not going to go through all the steps in creating a fan page. It's pretty simple. All you need to know is that you need to come to your home page and scroll down to your left navigation bar and click page, all right? So now when it comes down to creating ads, there are several options that you can do. Now, I am in Mozilla Firefox right now. So there are a couple of ways that you can get to your ads. You can use Firefox or you can use Chrome. And when you use Chrome, you can use your Power Editor. And you can create ads using the Power Editor. The Power Editor is a little bit more powerful than just using a regular browser like Internet Explorer or Firefox. 
and it allows you to do a few more things, but I'm not going to get into all of that right now as it relates to the Power Editor. But when it comes down to creating your ad, there are a couple of things that you can do and a couple of things that you should know. So you go to your home page and you go down to that bottom area right next to page and you click on add. And this is how you begin to create an ad. Now, the last time a lot of people um, asked me, okay. I'm just going to say start over. So what happens is when every time you start an ad and you don't complete it, it will ask you if you want to continue or if you want to start over. So I'm starting over. But there are a couple of things that you should know about Facebook advertising. First of all, it's really powerful and it could be really useful for your business and you can begin to generate a lot of leads. The other thing is that you that you should know is that if you think that just posting on Facebook is going to get you the leads that you desire, it can get you about, you know, 5 to 10 leads a day if you just post, if you post in specific groups, if you post on, you know, multiple pages, um, if you post multiple times, you can get several ads on Facebook, I mean, several leads on Facebook just doing that. But one of the things I can tell you for sure is that um, a lot of people are not seeing your posts. Facebook has become this pay-to-play platform. There's something known as reach as it relates to Facebook. And so what reach is and what it means is every time you post something on Facebook, um, some people will see it. So that means it will reach some people's home page, right? And it will not reach other people's home page. So if you notice, Facebook has siloed people. So for example, if you're not actively engaged with some of your friends, meaning that you haven't gone over to their page and commented or liked anything in the past few months, then Facebook is going to determine based upon its algorithm that you're no longer interested in that. And because it presumes that you're not interested in it, they're not going to show it in your timeline, okay? So basically, what happens is most people's reach has shrunk. And I can tell you that over this past year, the reach has shrunk and shrunk and shrunk. I mean, I have a fan page. My Network for Women in Business fan page has almost 40,000 likes right, fans and followers. And I have to tell you that sometimes my posts only reach 100 people. So therefore, what Facebook is telling me is that in order for me to reach more of those 40,000 people that like my page, I have to do either one of two things. I have to create content that they absolutely love and that they will share, that they will comment on, and it will go viral, right? Or I have to boost the post, which means that I have to pay for them to set, let allow more people to view it in their timeline. That's why advertising on Facebook now is an absolute must if you want to maximize the opportunity to generate leads. Now, in the past, it used to be really hard to, um, you know, create ads and get ads approved as it relates to network marketing. It's not as hard as it used to be. It's really not. And because I think that what's happening with, as with most companies that become very bottom line driven, they it becomes all about the revenue. They don't care where it's coming from. They don't care how they're getting it. They just want to get that ad revenue in. And I believe that's part of the reason why, you know, that Russia thing was able to happen. But I knew that was going to happen a long time ago, but I digress. But anyway, so when it comes down to ads, there's a couple of things that you can do. And I'm, I'm, I just want to give you guys a little bit of theory before I get into action, right? There are a couple of things that you can do here. You want to build your own audience, right? And every time you advertise, you know, when you first set up a fan page, you don't have a lot of people that like the page. So one of the things that you can do is you can come to um, the ad area and you can create a likes campaign. 
where you will get a lot of people to like your page. And I can tell you from experience that that's not very expensive. So one of the things that I did was when I first started my fan page, I had about 50 people that liked it. I created a likes campaign and it grew pretty quickly and it went from 50 to 5,000 real quick and it went from 5,000 to 10,000 real quick quick. But I have to tell you that over the years, it's gotten a little slower and slower and slower in the build, but I do organically get about 100 to almost 200 people that like the page every week. But what you have to do is find the type of content that people like. People love images. People love videos. So those are the two things that can actually build your fan page and make it go viral very quickly. And viral meaning, meaning that people are sharing it. So anytime somebody shares the content that you created, then that means that the reach is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay? So, so that's very important. That's something you want to do. Video. Video, I must say, is hot and video is cheap right now. So you can create an ad using video and it can be very inexpensive. Okay? So I, I'm telling you, if you had an ad with video, it's probably going to cost you three cents a click. Okay? And that's something that, let me see, I think some people have some questions. Okay, no, I think I answered your question. But video is going to be real cheap. But also, in terms of building your audience, Facebook has something here called the retargeting pixel, right? So when you go to the ads manager and you click on pixels, because this is something that I didn't cover in the, the last training that um, one of the guys really wanted me to cover, which is the retargeting pixel. Now, I have to tell you that the retargeting pixel is really cool. And what happens with your retargeting pixel is that you can come over here and you can create a pixel, which is a piece of script, a piece of code, a short piece of code that you can add on to your website, right? Now, once you add the, the code onto your website, what will happen is every time somebody visits your website, it will fire off the Facebook pixel. And then if you have an ad and you choose as the audience the, the name that you chose for the pixel, then what's going to happen is you can target the people that have been to your website and they will view the ad. So for example, you know, I have my small business boot camp for women, right? And in my small business boot camp for women, I have a Facebook pixel, right? So what that means is, and my computer is moving just a little bit slow, my, what it means is that I've came over here and I took the code from the pixel, right, and I added it to my website, right, I'm trying to find the, the source for the pixel, okay, some details here. So I added the code to my website and what I have is I have a WordPress website. And I'm going to go into it and I'm going to log into it, right? I'm going to log into the Small Business Bootcamp for Women website so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I, I use WordPress for all of my websites, um, just so you know. And it's actually pretty cool because it's, it's easy, I find, to use. And what I do is I come over and I log into my websites and it brings me to my dashboard. Now, when you're over here and you have your pixels, right, as you can see, it's giving me data on the number of people that have gone to the website and the number of people that have viewed pages and stuff like that. So it's letting me know that it's active. And over here, it's telling me that I've actually built an audience of about 2,000 people that I can retarget on Facebook. 
So what that means is, you know, like some of you probably have gone to Amazon and you viewed something on Amazon. Then you came back over to Facebook and you looked on the right hand side and you saw that same item that you viewed on Amazon. Or you may have gone to your bank and did online banking. And then you came over to Facebook and you saw an ad for your bank and you wondered, okay, well, wait a minute. You know, you may have gone to Macy's and saw that, you know, Macy's had a nice dress. And then you came over to Facebook and you saw the dress. And you were like, wait a minute, I just looked at that dress. Maybe that's a sign saying that I can, I should buy it. Well, what that really is, is a retargeting pixel, and it's following you around. And, you know, not only does Facebook has a pixel, but Google has a pixel as well. And you might have noticed that that Macy's ad will follow you all around. And then everywhere there's Google AdSense, an ad for that dress will pop up, and that's because they had the Facebook pixel on the website and they had the Google pixel on the website, okay? This is high level stuff I know, but I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. I'm gonna see, let me open up the questions because I think somebody has a question. Is this the same as a cookie? Nope, it's not the same. This is actually a piece of code that you take and you add it to your website. So as you can see here, I have a women in business pixel. And then over here it says set up. So if I click this button, it'll allow it'll show me how I want, you know, how I can add the code to my website. So I always choose copy and paste the code, right? So basically what I would do is I will take this piece of code and you could just click this button and click copy it, right? And then I generally go over to my website. Now, there's, this is a little bit complicated and it might be a little bit over your head, but just bear with me. But when you have a regular website, like if you have a Wix or a Weebly, what you have to do is find where they had the header code and you have to add the pixel in between the open header code and the closed header code. Now, if, if you don't understand what that is, then what you probably should do is go to, um, YouTube, if you have a Wix or a Weebly website, and and type in um, how to add the Facebook pixel to Weebly or Wix, or whatever kind of platform your website is set up on, you want to go to YouTube and, and type in how to add the pixel to the website, and see what it comes up with, and then it will show you how to do it. But here, what I do is um, I have a plugin on my website, and a lot of plugins will allow you to easily add the code. And the plugin that I use is called Tracking Code Manager, and you can just go into the settings in the Tracking Code Manager, and if you want to edit the pixel, you can edit it. Or if you want to add a new tracking code, so for example, if I wanted to add the Google Pixel, all I would have to do is get the information from Google, Google probably in Google Analytics, and I could just click Add New Tracking Code, and I could click and add that snippet of code, and, and it's just as simple as that. I copied it from Facebook, and I pasted it. So I'm just using a plugin here at WordPress to make it easy so I don't have to go into the style sheets and actually find the code that's the header and copy it and make sure making sure that it's in the right place. So this is the reason why I like WordPress because it has a simple dashboard that allows you to add all kinds of plugins and, and make it a real powerful site. But this is my small business for bootcamp website and this is how I add my pixels. Right? So when you have a pixel, you can use that as your targeted audience. What, what you can also do in Facebook, and I'm just going to give you guys this kind of overview as it relates to, you know, um, all of the different tools and the different things that you can do. You can come over here and you can create, um, you know, custom audiences and 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 all of that. And when you in Chrome, you can use the power editor, right? 
And so when you create custom audiences, you can create lookalike audiences, you can upload uh, email addresses that you have from your past customers, and Facebook will create a lookalike audience. And okay, Karen wants to know, can you show that again, please? Where did you copy the code in the plugin? So okay, so I came over here. And what I did was I went into my plugins, right? And I went into the plugin that was called Tracking Manager. So let me do it again real quick. These are all the installed plugins, right? And then I came down here, and the name of this plugin is called Tracking Code Manager. And I went into the settings, right? And you would click here, add new tracking code, right? And then once you get this box, you would just paste the information in here. So you would hit Control V and you would paste the pixel code in here. And then all you would have to do is save it at the end. Click save. All right. And that's how you do that. And that's how I get my tracking codes on my WordPress sites. I use that particular plugin and I find it very helpful and very easy. Otherwise it could be really, really complicated. But it's not very hard. And then once you create your ads and it knows where to position it, absolutely it does. It knows exactly where to put it on your website. Karen asked a question and the plugin knows where to and it's not the only plugin when you use um, WordPress there are multiple different kinds of plugins that you can use all right and so um, like I said you can create custom audiences where you can go in and upload a bunch of emails um, and you can create ads once you create that audience where you have uploaded kind of the emails for all of your maybe past customers um, then you can target just that audience or you can upload some emails of somebody that purchased something from you in the past and then what you can do is create a look-alike audience so what Facebook will do is they will go in and they will look at the accounts of those past buyers and they will find other people on Facebook that have similar interests, similar backgrounds, and they'll create a lookalike audience for you. And you can begin to um, market and promote to those people. Okay? So uh, let me go in here back to where I was before. Let me go back to the Ads Manager. And, you know, what I encourage you to do is to just become really familiar with your ads manager and to go through everything that you have available there um, and just you know try to understand what's going on and you know what's happening so in my ads manager you can see I had a couple of ads that ran and you can see you know how much I spent and it's interesting like you know some like this was a video ad which is interesting and you guys can see I spent the same amount of money and this is this is a good example for me to show you the difference between video and a regular post this was a long post that had lots and lots of words it was just a long post and I promoted it and look at how much I paid per click two dollars and thirty five cents right and I only got 13 clicks and then this was a video this no this wasn't a video this was a post this was a post that I was advertising free video training. So this was just the post engagements and it was 32 cents a click. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, page post engagements and video. If this was video, I probably would have had double. You can't see the information about this video, I mean not this video ad that I ran a while back ago because Facebook will remove all of this stuff really quick. So you have to go in and download it and you can export all your data using the export button right here. But when you want to create a new ad, you can go either to your home page at the bottom left like I showed before or you can go in your ad manager and click create ad. Let me see. Okay, so there's no more questions. 
So like I said before, the two best types of ads that you cre can, could create are engagement ads, page post engagements, or video ads. These are the two best types of ads you can create. So I'm going to go ahead and create a video ad, right? And I'm going to call this SBBC uh, 2017. I'm going to put a 2 at the end. And we're going to continue. And then up here again, it'll ask you um, if you want to create a new ad set name. You can rename it or you can leave it the same. So there's a question before I go on. How are the pay-per-clicks determined? The pay-per-clicks are determined. It's really, you, you can set it up so that Facebook will determine the best, the best time to post and when you can get the most clicks. But basically, what pay-per-click stands for is just that. So if you run an ad and people see it, right? If people, you can, you can run an ad that's pay-per-impression or pay-per-click. Now, pay-per-click is when people run an ad, they see it, that's an impression. But when they click on it, that's more of an engagement, right? They click on the ad, they click on a link. So basically what PayPal will do is they will determine um, what is the best price based upon the reach, based upon the frequency of the ad, based upon the number of people that are interacting. That's what they're going to determine the rate. But the pay-per-click is determined by the number of people that have actually clicked on your ad. So if you did paper impressions, which is an option, that would be the number of people that the number of people that saw the ad, the number of people where the ad popped up in their timeline and they saw it. They consider that an impression, right? Because they saw it. I like to do pay per click versus pay per impression. Right? So now I'm doing a video ad. I determined from the beginning that it was going to be a video ad. And then now what I want to do is I can uh, use one of my previous, previous audiences. So as you can see right here, I have the ability to use the audience of people who visited the website. So this is from my retargeting pixel. That would be 400 people, right? Or I can do a lookalike audience from one of my page post engagements that I had a while ago. So I had a bunch of page post engagements where it created a couple of lookalike audiences, right? So this was an audience that I created that was a custom list of people that purchased a product from me. And so that was only 30 people. But then this was a lookalike audience of people that purchased something from me, and I asked them to create a lookalike audience. So you can have the option of creating a custom audience from this area, or what you can do is you can just get started on creating a new audience. And um, what I'm going to do is I don't want just the United States. I'm going to do an ad that's based upon my event. So what I'm going to do is I want people that are in New York. New York, New York, right? And I'm going to do within a 50-mile radius of New York, all right? Because my event is in New York. My event is targeted towards women. So I'm going to do women. My event is targeted towards women that are primarily over, I would say, between 25. And I would say... Uh, let me do this. 25 and let's say 55. Okay. So I have an audience size of about 4 million people, right? 
New York, New York within like a, let me just get it all the way over here to 50, right? I want it to be in a 50 mile radius. I could just type it 50. Okay. Women. And so I have a good size audience here, New York, New York, women. I'm just going to say uh, English speaking U.S. Okay. And um, let's see what uh, if I want to target specific people. Um, I could target women in business, right? People who like women in business as an interest. Right? I don't want iPhone users. I don't want this behavior. I just want women in business. Okay. I could also target like entrepreneurship. Um, I could target female entrepreneur. I think that's better even. Um, yeah, and now it took it down to 15,000 people which is absolutely perfect because guess what I don't want to really target a whole lot of people because the smaller you have this number if it's like 10,000 you know even if it's 5,000 that's a good number because at the end of the day you don't want it to be too big because the less number of people that Facebook has to find the better off you will be as it relates to your ads so let's see, if, um, I think there may be a question or two. Okay, no questions, good. So this is good, all right? So to retract so you can see, I created an ad. I'm creating this for my small business bootcamp for women. I'm targeting people in New York within a 50 mile radius of New York. I'm targeting women between 25 and 55, and I'm targeting female entrepreneurs and women in business, okay? And so um, I'm going to save this audience, and I'm just going to call it, I'm just going to call it women in business. NYC okay and you you know if you find an audience that you like you might want to save it because it makes it a whole lot easier when you come back okay author said he couldn't hear me did I go in and out and I hope that the rest of you can hear me you should be able to I may have gone a little bit in and out and Arthur it may be your Loud and clear, says Sean Robinson. Great. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> All right. So, let's see. All right. Lisa says she can hear me fine. Sophia says she can hear me fine. So, author, it may just be your computer. Okay. So, now that we have the audience defined, let's edit placements. Because I don't want it to really go everywhere. I really don't want it to go to Instagram. All right, so I'm going to take that off. And so it took my audience down even more. And to that I say, yay, because really the smaller the size, the better. I mean, a lot of people think that big and more is better. But really and truly, when it comes down to Facebook advertising and optimizing, smaller is definitely better. We're going to be on this webinar a long time. All right, I'm just letting y'all know, and I mean, I'm down for it. So you want to set your budget and your daily budget. You can set it to run from a specific date. So you can start it on the 20th, and you can end it. Let's see, if today is Wednesday, we can end it. Let's see, give it like a few days so you can see how the ad is doing. So it's saying that you'll spend no more than 50 bucks. So you can do $10 or you could do $5. It's totally up to you what you decide to do. Okay? So just so you know that you can actually set a start date and an end date, you can set it to run continuously, but I don't encourage anybody to do that because you can forget it. And then you can look up and have a humongous, um, a humongous bill. Okay? 
So I always, I set it up for automatic bid. So this allows Facebook to set the bid that will get me the most views at the best price, just like it says. Okay, so now I'm going to continue. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to change the fan page to the Small Business Boot Camp for Women. Okay, and this is why you need a fan page, and then you can also change the name again, and I'm just going to change this to SBBC Video Views, right? And then what you're going to do is I'm going to add a single video right now, right? Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is you can upload a video or you can browse your video library. And I'm browsing my video library. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this particular video right here because I know that this video is a video of me talking about the Small Business Boot Camp and talking about um, What's I'm going to use, let's see, these are the same videos. So I'm actually going to use this one because I named it the Small Business Boot Camp for Women. I'll use that one, right? And so then what it does is once you pick a video, you can either pick a video from your computer or you can use a video. I don't know why it's starting to, it always does this. And here we go. I'm trying to see where the video is playing. I don't know why it, keeps, it does that. So now you can see, you can browse through the thumbnail, thumbnails so that you can determine which one you actually want to use. So I like to pick a thumbnail. That actually doesn't have me looking crazy, right? So you guys are going to have to forgive. Facebook has it playing in the background, and I don't see where I can turn it off. So I'm going to keep going, right? And then what you can do is come over here. All right, so here you can change the text for the ad, and you can basically say smart and savvy business women are attending the this, this event. Get your ticket now right? So savvy, right? And as you can see, it's updating in real time. As you're typing here, it's going to update in real time the video, right? It's going to update what you're saying, and you can see it view in mobile, or you can see the desktop view. It's always best to view it in mobile, because that's how most people are going to see it. And then what you can do is you can come down to the advanced options, right? So my computer is moving slow. But you can see at the bottom, hold on. So you can change the URL, and I can put here www.smallbusinessbootcampforwomen.com, right, if I want to add that there, right?
and then you can click confirm right and that's going to confirm your video ad so i have a couple questions how should you determine the budget per ad and that's a good question and it's totally up to you right you can set it up however you want to, $5 a day or $10 a day. What does a thumbnail do? A thumbnail is really the picture that people are going to see in their timeline as they're scrolling through. So what happens is when you upload your video, it will look at different screens and it will give you options of which screen you want to use as your timeline thumbnail or you can create a custom thumbnail. And that's what people are going to see in the ad. So this is what people are going to see in this area. You can either pick a picture that they're going to see, or you can pick a, a thumbnail, a custom thumbnail. But this is how you create a video ad in Facebook. All right, you guys got it? And let me show you a couple of ways, a couple of other ways that you can, let me get out of here. Oh my God, let me go back to Ads Manager and say leave so this video could stop running on autopilot. All right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to go back to my Facebook page, right? and show you how you can create other ads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Network for Women in Business page. And I'm going to show you a couple of other things that you can do. So you can do, you can boost a page, right? I mean boost a post. Or you could create offers. And that's also something that you can do that's pretty popular, right? And I'm sorry my computer has slowed down a little bit. But we're just going to take my time. We're going to take our time and go through the information, right? All right, so when you come to your page and you know you have your posts on your page, right, we're going to let some of the posts populate. One of the things that you can do is you can create ads from your page. So you don't have to necessarily be in the ads manager to create an ad. You can create an ad straight from your page. So for example, if I wanted to, let's look at this, not this one. Let's look at some more. Right? Okay. Let's look at this right? Like this one. This is a, a post that I published right? And it talked about having a plan and if, if, if the plan is written, right? So if I wanted more people to see this ad or if I wanted more people to see this ad, which is all about Instagram training. So here's a good example. So basically I have a lead capture page that's related to this Instagram training. And people can get free Instagram training. And this is a post that I created using Canva. And if you go to www.canva.com, you can create these nice little images that are perfect for social media. And then you can come and you can create a post like this one, which is about the free video training that they can get if they type in this information, right? And then what you can come here and do is you can boost the post. So I boosted this post so that I can get more people to view it. And so you can see 3,000 um, 
329 people were able to view it and also I got 12 shares which is really good which means that it was able to be seen by more people so anytime you want to boost a post all you have to do is go to that particular post and click on this button boost post and then once you click on the button boost the post this box is going to come up and it's going to show you what the ad would look like and it'll just be your post and then you can choose people who like your page and now an ad like this would be really cheap because you can um, just basically pick only those people who like your page and you can you know do it locally or you can do it all of the people in the United States that like your page or if you wanted to create a custom audience or if you wanted to go to people who like your page and all of their friends that expands your reach so this is something that you can do a, a boosted post and then you can create your budget whether you want it to be ten dollars a day or whatever it'll give you an estimate of how many people it's gonna reach and you can do it for seven days for one day or you can set the date for how long you want it to go and then after you do that all you have to do you can see it's already connected to my um, Facebook account and all you have to do is hit boost post and then you're done and that's another way that you can advertise on Facebook so I'm not doing that promotion another thing that you can do which is really cool is that you can create an offer so for example you can come down here to the offer area which is on your fan page and you can click here and create an offer so if you wanted to like say for people you know get ten dollars off your ticket to ticket to the small business boot camp 2017 right you can put that here then you can add a photo or different photos and you can tell where people can redeem it you can add a promo code if you want to and then you can add the terms and conditions if you want to and then you can publish it and then after you publish it you can boost it so that more people can see it and then what happens is when people see the offer they can claim the offer and then what Facebook is going to do is when you set the offer to end like say for instance if I create a three-day offer that's good from now until Friday what happens is all those people that claim the offer what Facebook is going to do they're going to notify them when the offer is about to expire so if you set an expiration date for a week two weeks a month as soon as it's ready to expire, Facebook is going to send them an email. Now, what's really cool about this is they're not going to get that email in Messenger. They're going to get that email sent directly to the email account that they use to actually sign up for Facebook. So that's pretty cool as it relates to that. Now, I'm just going to do discard offer. Now as it relates to posting on Facebook, one of the things you want to do is you want to create your posts so that they're dynamic, so that people get engaged. You want to create posts that people can comment on. So if you're in network marketing and you want to comment, you want to create a post so that people can comment so that you can begin to reach out to them. The types of posts that you want to create are like this. Say, for instance, your business might be weight loss, right? And you put up a post and say, oh, my God, I can't believe that I lost 10 pounds. I've been struggling to run and lose all of this weight. And all of a sudden, and, you know, and now it finally happens. Who's ready to lose 10 pounds? Click, um, I, you know, who's ready to lose 10 pounds? You know, um, press, you know, or type, I'm ready in the comment section right so what you want to do is with your post you want to ask questions so for example you know you want to promote your success 
I can't believe that this week I made $300 in my business. Who's ready to make an extra $300? Type I'm ready in the comment section, right? And when people type, I'm ready, then what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to use a tool like this tool here called Credit Response. This is the Credit Response, right? Oh, I think, yes, Get Credit Response. Get Credit Response. So when you use this tool, Get Credit Response, right, what's going to happen is, and I know this video is going to come up and it's, I'm going to turn it off. So what's going to happen is every time somebody types, I'm ready, this tool is going to send a personal message to their inbox, right? Every time they type, I'm ready. So you can set up a customized response that said, oh, I noticed, I noticed that you responded to my post saying that you're ready to lose weight. So I wanted to tell you um, a little bit more about my program. Go here, right? And you can send them to your URL, right? And if you said, um, you know, I can't believe I made an extra $1,000 this month. Who's ready to earn an extra $1,000? I'm Type I'm ready in the comment section. And everybody who writes, I'm ready, oh, get the message. Oh, I noticed that you type that you're ready to earn an extra $1,000. If that's still the case, then I'd like to show you more. Is that all right? Go here, right? And you can send them to your URL. So that's what's pretty cool about that. that and it does it on autopilot so you can do it even while you're not around. So I talked about the pixel, I talked about posting, I talked about boosting posts, I talked about um, page engagements, doing engagement posts, and engagement posts and boosting a post is almost the same. It's a little bit different, but you can set those up. But once you set up one Facebook ad, you can begin to set up multiple Facebook ads. And then what's going to happen is test them over a few days. Go to your, your pages and look at your insights and find out. When are people interacting? What days are people interacting? What times are people interacting? And set up your ads around that time. And then test, test, test. You can start and stop, start and stop, start and stop as many times as you can. But this is what's going to allow you to be successful with marketing on Facebook. Now, does anybody have any questions before I move over to Instagram? Where did you get the credit response tool again? It's at Get Credit Response. And what's, what's really cool is um, I have some tools from the training that I did. And what I'm going to do is Tony Coleman Brown forward slash inspire tools. I'm going to take this and copy it. And I'm going to put it in the chat. Right for everybody to to see. Right, and I'm gonna send it to everybody. So if you go to this website, this well, this is my website, but if you go to this page in my website, all the tools are listed there. All all of the tools that I talked about, and as a matter of fact, you want to save this link because this is where I'm gonna also post the replay. Okay, so save that link. All right. And then while you're at it, while you're on Facebook and all that stuff, like all my pages, like all my stuff, like everything I have, follow me, send me a friend request, do all of that stuff. Let's keep in touch. All right. All right. OK, Janet, you got it. Good. So I think we can move on and I'm going to jump back into my PowerPoint and let's move on to. Uh, well, before I move on, let's talk about going live. OK, because Facebook Live, you can go live from and let's let's, you know, go back into Facebook so you guys can see. You can go live from a page. You can go live from your personal page. Um, <clears throat> you can go live from a group. You could go live from your phone. You could go live from your laptop. 
you could go live from a, a software called BeLive.tv. But all you have to do to go live is click on this little button right here. And then Facebook will start to gather up your audience. It's going to connect to your camera. And then it's going to take you live. And you can begin to talk about a myriad of different things, but I'm going to jump into my PowerPoint to talk about it because what I want you guys to think about is this. When you go live on Facebook and you create your videos, you can take that video and you can download it onto your computer. Now, you always want to be thinking in terms of repurposing and reusing any piece of content that you create, all right? So when you go live, think about all of the different places that you can repurpose and reuse that content. So basically, you can go live on just about every social media platform, Snapchat. Snapchat chat allows you to um, actually even do Snapchat ads. I tested the platform out a little bit. It's a little bit tricky. And um, it it just it wasn't working too well when I went on it. So that's one of the reasons why I didn't include it. But you go live on Snapchat, you can download your Snapchat videos. I downloaded a whole slew of Snapchat videos and I uh, repurposed and reused them on Instagram. And you can take your live videos and post them on Instagram. You can post them on YouTube. So there's so many things that you can do with your go live videos. So it's important that you think about once you create a piece of content, how can you reuse it? So a question from Tanya, can you manage your target audience on Facebook Live, like choose who you want your target video to go to? No, you can't do that right now because what's going to happen is it depends upon where you are going live from. So if you're going live from your personal page, then it's going to gather some of the people who are your friends. If you're going live from your fan page, then it's going to gather people who have liked your page. If you go live from a group, then it's going to gather people that are in your group. So it depends upon where you are going live from. So that's how you can do a little bit of targeting because you can, and then there's software that allows you to go live across multiple different, you know, pages and all of that stuff. Can you use a pre-recorded video and make it look live? Yes, you can. You just can't do it on Facebook. There's an um, expensive piece of software that, um, that allows you to do that. I can't remember the name of it but it was pretty expensive the last time I looked. And it allows you to go live across multiple different pages and platforms. And then there's some other software that is not so expensive that allows you to broadcast live across different platforms. And I'm not sure whether or not BeLive.TV allows you to go live across multiple pages or platforms, but I definitely know if you use BeLive.TV, you can go live and you can pull other people into your live and you can do a live interview. So there's lots of things that you can do. Um, and I would, it, I would encourage you to kind of search and just, you know, kind of find out what's out there. Okay, so it's all, of, all about repurposing and reusing, right? So you can upload your videos to YouTube, you can build your YouTube channel, you can add your videos, your live videos to your blogs, you can send your videos out via email, you can have your videos transcribed and turned into ebooks. So that's just to name a few things that you can do, but there are a myriad of things that you can do to repurpose and um, can you see what you look like when you're while you're live? Yep. Yes, you can. That's why a lot of people, when they go live, some of the things that you see them doing is fixing their hair and moving hair out of place. Um, is it easier and better to use um, Instagram over Facebook ads? No, I think Instagram ads are, I mean, I think Facebook ads are better than um, Instagram ads. And you can create an ad on Facebook and utilize it on Instagram as well. Okay. Okay, Rachel. Um, so here's your checklist. When you're crafting an ad, first you want to make sure you have a good offer. 
Then you want to have the right lead capture page. We use ClickFunnels in our training on, on, um, on Saturday. Then you want to make sure you have your thank you pages. You want to test and make sure everything is connected and that your email marketing is working out fine. And then plan out and map out your ad before you um, actually just go live with it. So now I want to move into Instagram marketing. So the first thing that I want to talk about, and we're going to be on here for a while, and I thank you guys for hanging in, but I just want to go through all of this stuff. And it's, it's not going to be too much, and it shouldn't be too much longer after this. But what I want to tell you first and foremost, if you take your phone out right now, and you look at your Instagram, and you log into Instagram, right? And let me plug up my phone into my computer before it dies. But if you log into your Instagram app right now, if your Instagram app does not look like this one right here for the Network for Women in Business, um, and what I mean by that is if you don't have the call, email, or get directions button on it, then you don't have your Instagram account set up as a business account. And one of the things you want to do right now, right now, and I mean right, right now, is you want to go ahead and change, convert your account into, an, in, into a business account on Instagram so that you can get those options. Now, you guys can see when I first did this training, I only had 1,500 people. But if you go to my Instagram page right now, I have over 3,000. So I was doing a really good job with building my um, Instagram following right after so so basically if you do the things that I'm telling you to do here in this training you'll be able to grow your following on Instagram as well and you'll have more people that you can um, reach out to so one of the things you want to do is in order to get your page to look like this and convert it into a business account you have to go into the settings which is the universal icon for settings is this wheel and you want to go into your settings and you want to go ahead and convert your um, profile and you could go into edit profile and when you edit the profile you can change it into a business profile right and then when you go to you see right here where it says edit profile this allows you to switch it over see right here this button too that says switch to a business profile you can, when you edit your profile, this is going to allow you to change this text that you write, you have right here. And it's also going to allow you to put a link in your profile. Okay? So you click edit profile to change this information right here. And what I would encourage you to do too is um, use some emojis. Make this stuff stand out a little bit when you edit your profile. But then you can scroll down right here to this button right here where it says switch to business profile. And you want to switch your Instagram account to a business account. And when you switch it to a business account, it'll allow you to have this call, email, directions. Because you want people to be able to get in contact with you. You know, I know a lot of people want to keep their stuff private. But when you're trying to promote on social media, you want to create separate accounts. You want to have personal accounts. You want to have Instagram accounts for your business. And when you create these business accounts, you want people to be able to get in contact with you. You want people to have have your phone number, your email address, your website. You want them to have all of that information, right? And then when you click on this button right here where it says link accounts, you can link your business account to your business page on Facebook, right? And then if you want to do a quick building up your followers, you can follow all of the people that are your friends on Facebook. And that's how you can, you know, Start off real fast and building building up your followers. You know, find all your contacts and you want to follow all of those people. And then there's some apps that you can use to unfollow all of the people who don't follow you. I use an app called the Cleaner app. It's an Instagram cleaner app, and it's it's been pretty good. I haven't had any problems with it, but all I do is I go in that app and I 
I highlight all of the people who aren't following me and I unfollow all those people. So if people aren't following you back, you don't have to feel obligated to follow them back. But how you're going to build your account is a couple of ways. You're going to build it through hashtagging and you're going to build it through posting, okay? So the first thing, like I said, you want to do is switch your account to a business account. And you want to edit your profile and you want to make sure that you put links. So this is where you're going to get crafty with your posting. And you're going to change your links. So you're going to go in your profile and edit your, your links in your bio anytime you want to promote something new. Right? And then, like I said before, you can connect your page with your Facebook page. But what's really cool is once you switch your account to a business account, you can get all of these insights, man. It'll tell you um, who is who is looking at your posts, what time of the day they're looking at your posts, who, you know, what posts were most popular in the past seven days. So you can know what type of posts that you can keep posting on Instagram. It just, you know, this is what you want. You want information because insights is just that. It's just taking a deep dive and a deep look into your business so that you understand what's going on and it gives you a clear picture of what direction you should be moving in so that you can build more engagement, get more people following you, and make your Instagram profile more popular, okay? So that's what you want to do. First things first. You want to set up your profile and make sure that your profile is a business profile so that people can find you. And you want to get real crafty with your profile, right? So what you're going to do a lot is edit profile. So you can edit your profile here or you can click this button right here and edit your profile from your phone. All right? So this is how you build an audience on Instagram. You have to use the right hashtag, right? You have to use the right filter for your pictures and you can't go wrong with normal. So you know how when you post your pictures on Instagram, you can change the color, you can make it sepia, you can make it grayscale, you can, you know, get all crafty, rose gold, you can do a lot of different things with the colors of your Instagram post pictures, but you want to make sure that it's normal. And you want to also what you can do is you can grab your competitors' followers. So, for example, if you're with Inspire and you go to and you're on Instagram and you're in your Instagram account and you go to the search and you search like Midol or Tampax, you can go to the Tampax official page. And I'm, I'm looking at my phone right now while I'm doing this. If you go to the Tampax official page, you'll see that they have about 17,000 followers. Now, if you click on the button that shows the 17,000 followers, you can go and literally follow all of the people who are following Tampax, right? So that's how you, that's a hack, right? So, you know, if you had a specific page that was, related a specific Instagram profile that was related to your business and you wanted to create a targeted audience of people that would be interested in your type of product. Inspire has personal products for women. So you will want to follow, you will want to build a followers of people that like personal products for women, right? So you could build your follower that way. So you could follow them and then if they don't follow you, you can use a tool like Cleaner and just after a week or so, if the people that you follow don't follow you, you just go back and unfollow them. But that's how you build a specific audience for a specific account. Now, you know, I spoke to people at the event and a lot of the people didn't have Facebook fan pages. So I'm sure if you're on Instagram, you're not like me. And I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I have five Instagram profiles, okay? Because I believe I have one for my network for women in business, one for myself. I have one for my network marketing training center. And um, I have one for a course. Some of these things I'm going to delete. In the first fourth quarter 
I'm streamlining and deleting some of this stuff so that I don't, you know, drive myself crazy. But if you are really looking to, you know, build a specific niche, right, a specific niche, I suggest that you create a separate profile that's different from your personal profile and build a specific audience around that. And then you can use also some uh, apps like Cleaner and Crowdfire in order for you to build your audience as well. But, you know, a lot of this stuff is hard work, but I can tell you that it's worth it because you will get a lot of people that will DM you about specific things. And I tell you, you know, I've met, I've met quite a few people from um, Instagram. It's, it's, it's really interesting, right? I, I love social media because it makes the average person like you and I above average and we could get above average results. Now, the types of posts that you're going to post. Now, one of the things that I tell people all the time is if you don't know what to post, go to a major brand and look at the type of things that they're posting and then just duplicate that. Just duplicate what they're doing and you can do the exact same thing. Okay, so Janet wants to know, what is a right hashtag? Is this for searching? Sorry, she don't know. I'm glad you asked that question. So a hashtag is basically, okay, so I'm going to go to my Instagram profile, and I'm going to tell you that when you're posting on Instagram, if I'm doing a post about my small business boot camp for women, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the post, but then at the end of the post, I'm going to put a hashtag. So a hashtag is just that little number sign, and I'll put hashtag business tips, or I'll put hashtag women in business, hashtag female entrepreneur, hashtag um, women who work, hashtag uh, women's conference, hashtag business conference. And basically what happens is with hashtag, people search hashtags, right? So if you go into the search section, right, if you're in Instagram and you haven't have the phone in your hand right now, if you click on the little magnifying glass and then you click search on search at the top, right, you'll see that you'll get the top top suggested, then you have people, the top suggested people, then you have tags. So I can click, I can type in women in business and I can find that tag and I can see all, if I type on that tag, what it's going to do is show me all of the different posts that have the same hashtag. And this is how you can find people that you can follow or this is how people who are looking to follow other people like you can find you. So this is how you identify yourself as a person that's interested in people or interested in having people follow you or find you using that particular hashtag. So I hope that kind of makes sense. So hashtagging is really important because I can promise you right now that if you go in and do a post on Instagram, and you load it up with hashtags, and you could put like about 30 of them in there. If you load it up with hashtags, I promise you when you come back, you're going to have a lot of people that have followed you because of that hashtag. If you put hashtag women, if you put hashtag female entrepreneur, if you put hashtag stress, hashtag stressed out, hashtag live life, hashtag LOL, the most popular hashtag in the world is love. Hashtag love. If you put that hashtag, then you're going to get people that will follow you. So, you know, you want to post and you want to post often. You want to um, change the link in your URL and you want to change the link in your URL as it relates to whatever you're promoting. So what you want to do is, because you don't want to change the link in your URL every day. You want to change the link in your URL maybe once a month, right? And you want to make sure that all of the posts that you're posting is related to your URL. And if you want to have a basic URL, you can have that. Or if you want to have people to keep in contact with you, 
They can sign up to your mailing list. You can put your mailing list in your um, in your pro profile bio. And you want to make sure that you're constantly having it, you know, kind of relevant or general so that when you're posting that you can tell people what to do. And you always want to give a call to action. You always want to tell people what to do. What you definitely don't want to do is tell them to click on this URL in the post because it's not hyperlinked. They would have to copy and paste the URL that's in your post because it's just, like I said, it's, it's not hyperlink. So Karen wants to know, to avoid creep, should we not use pictures of ourselves as we do in our personal pages? Um, that's really up to you. So if you create a business profile and you don't want, you don't have to use your pictures. It's really up to you. It depends. You know, it depends because in my business profile, I show myself because in a network for women in business, I am the face of the business. So I don't have, I don't have a problem showing myself in my profile but it just depends <clears throat> it depends upon you and what you're doing with your business okay so you want to post and you want to post often create a schedule and post often so basically when you're marketing on Instagram you're, you're starting out with a goal you're primarily you want to drive traffic to an offer um, and, or you want to drive traffic to a, a you know, where people can sign up to your list, but you want to create a strategy for posting and you want to create a content plan. You, of course, you have to use images, but not necessarily always. I mean, some of the images could be text, but you can also use video. You can also go live on Instagram, and that's very popular as well. Instagram is a younger platform, so you have a lot of people that are millennials or younger, a lot of teens and tweens are on Instagram. So if you're looking to capture a younger market, you can capture them there. You can also, um, like I said, use specific hashtags. You can also use trending hashtags. So those hashtags that are hot, if you want to just, you know, get, get found, you can use those trending hashtags. Also, you want to use emojis. Um, as much as possible because Instagram is a visual platform. And one of the ways to really blow out your Instagram is if you can connect with an influencer and get them to promote your product. Sometimes, you know, this is another form of marketing because if you connect with an influencer and ask them to promote your product, as a matter of fact, for, you know, my website where I have clothes, Classic Elite, um, I had someone contact me and for $70.00. She, you know, and if I sent her a couple of outfits, she would take pictures in the outfits and promote them on her page. And she has a large following. And um, that can help me with my following and stuff like that. So you can also create story ads. And, you know, you just want to be creative um, with Instagram. So how will you know you've achieved your goals? And this is, this is always a good question because... Like I said before, even with Facebook advertising, um, and we're going to talk about YouTube, with any of these platforms when you're advertising or when you're going out there, even spending your time, because believe it or not, your time is a value as well. You always, always, always want to have a goal. And whether that goal is to increase your number of uh, followers, or to increase your subscribers, or to generate leads, or to get downloads, or to generate sales, or to increase engagements, your likes and comments, or you may know that you're winning when your phone rings or when your website traffic increases. This is how you know you are winning, okay? But you want to jump into this with goals. It's so important to have goals when you're working with social media because I can tell you that you can flounder and flounder and flounder and just feel like you're just doing stuff and it's not making sense and you're not making any progress. So I always tell people, take a, take a pen and a pad. You know, this is where, what, what's today's date? September 20th? So this is like September 20th. We have 
a lot of time where we can really, in the next 30 days, you can do some amazing things with your business right before the holiday season. So what you want to do is you definitely want to create a plan, create a strategy, even if it takes you a couple of days to figure it out. So do that before you jump in so that you're not just all over the place. Okay? So that's it as it relates to Instagram and Instagram marketing. I'm telling you, if you do the things that I um, talked about, um, you will definitely see an increase. I, I'm telling you, I mean, some people are going to see an increase before the night is over if you go and do just a few things that I told you on your page. Because, you know, that's what happened the last time I did my Instagram training. So now YouTube. So let's spend some time on YouTube. Because YouTube is what I consider to be the not-so-quiet storm. And the reason why I consider it that way is because YouTube provides you with residual traffic. And basically, when you post a video on YouTube, I promise, if you go to YouTube right now, and let's do it, because, you know, I like, I like action. I like to hop, you know, hop around and, and get into action. And if you go to YouTube, definitely, definitely, definitely subscribe to my page, youtube.com forward slash Tony Coleman Brown. Subscribe to my page, okay, because I have a ton of great video. And, of course, I have more than one YouTube account. This is my um, Network for Women in Business channel. I have multiple channels. I have multiple channels of everything, um, you know, because it's just like that with me, right? Because I believe that you should have multiple channels depending upon what you're promoting. So I have one primarily for myself and one for the Network for Women in Business and one for my Network Marketing Training Center. But here, if you type in how to tie a bow tie, okay? Look at this video right here. How to tie a bow tie, right? This video has been up here for three years. Three years. And look at this one down here. It's been up here for three years. And look at the views. Over 4 million views. And it continues to get views. How to tie a bow tie. Look at this video right here. It's from Seven years ago, right? Seven years ago. And it's still getting views today. So, okay, how can I make money from YouTube? What does subscribe really mean? And this is from Kevin. All right, Kevin, that's a good question. So, okay, so if you were to go over to my channel, right, and you log on, right and you know because it's me my subscribe button is probably not going to pop up but see right here when it says some other channels that and it has subscribe right this is what you would click and people can subscribe to your channel and then you know you the subscribe button usually pops up on um, my page. Now, what does it mean? It means to see right here it says I have 118 subscribers. Every time somebody clicks subscribe, your subscriber count is going to go up. And see this little bell for notifications? If they click on notifications, every time you produce a YouTube video, the people who subscribe to your channel, if they check get notifications, they're going to get notified via their inbox on their Gmail accounts. They're going to get an email in their Gmail account saying that Tony Coleman Brown just uploaded a new video. You might want to go check it out. So that's powerful because they're going to get an email directly to their inbox saying that you just uploaded a new video. Now that's pretty powerful. So I have to tell you, thanks Sean for subscribing. I have to tell you guys that that is just it's just powerful. And so and somebody wanted to ask, how do I make money with YouTube? Well, basically, if you want to monetize your channel, first and foremost, I have to tell you that it takes 10,000 views for you to get monetization 
turned on on your YouTube channel. And YouTube will review your channel. It takes a couple of days, but once you get up to 10,000 views, it automatically will review your channel for monetization. And basically what will happen is um, every time you upload a video, you will have the opportunity for people can uh, watch an a ad before the video. And they can, depending upon how long the video is, they can watch an ad in the middle of the video and they can watch an ad at the end of the video, right? And every time people watch those ads, you will get paid AdSense income. That's how you monetize your channel. It's almost the same way as monetizing a blog. If you add AdSense to your blog and people come up to your blog and they click on the AdSense ad, you get paid for that. So that's how you monetize your YouTube channel. But YouTube, like I said in the PowerPoint video, I mean the, the PowerPoint video, the PowerPoint presentation here is video converts like crazy. When you put a video up on YouTube, it's like having, uh, you know, living single playing in reruns. You know how, you know, actors love having their television shows get picked up in reruns because all of a sudden they'll get a check in the mail because it was from some residual income from you know having the reruns being played well that's almost the same way as having a YouTube video up on YouTube once you set it it's like you set it and forget it you could walk away and come back you know years later and people are still looking at your video and you know if you monetize your channel you can still get paid for that. That's just like making money while you sleep. That's why a lot of young kids are saying, oh, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be a YouTuber because they know now that they can go on YouTube. They can, you can live stream from YouTube and, you know, you can get on there and just start talking and, and, you know, people start engaging and they start leaving comments and all of that stuff. And then before you know it, you never know what can happen. But a lot of young people are making, you know, a good bit of money, like $2,000 a month on their YouTube channels because they haven't monetized. But YouTube is also the number two search engine next to Google. Google owns YouTube. And basically, um, when people want to know how to do something, like how to tie a bow tie, how to connect, you know, um, how to add a plugin to my WordPress, how to create a website uh, using GoDaddy, or how to install WordPress on my GoDaddy site, you know. You can, that's where people go to YouTube because it's like the best instructional website that ever existed because of all of the videos that are there. And, you know, it's just awesome being a number two search engine in the world. All of this number two billion videos is probably way more than that right now. But you want to have, when you go on YouTube, you want to have a strategy, right? And basically, your strategy should be to get your video noticed and to get your video at the top of the YouTube search engine. So if you decide that this is one of the platforms that you want to play on, and YouTube has become more of a social site than it's ever been before, because people are interacting, they're commenting, they're giving it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and they're asking questions and all of that stuff. So it's become more of a social site than ever before. So you can really build a community on YouTube. But when you're looking to get your videos ranked on YouTube, here are some of the things that you need to do. First, when you create the video and you save it, you want to save the video as your keyword name. Now your keyword, this is how people find you. So keywords could be weight loss, um, key, but I don't encourage people to use very general keywords. I encourage people to use long tail keywords. Now a long tail keyword is something more like how do I lose weight or how do I lose an extra 10 pounds. So I encourage, encourage people to get more specific that way because that's how people search. People tend to use long keywords when they search. So I encourage you to do that. Now Google has something called the Google Keyword Analyzer tool. So I would encourage you to use that 
to find out good keywords that you can use, but name your video that in a file name. So before you even upload it into YouTube, make sure that the video is named after a keyword. Then use your keyword in the title, preferably twice. And if you could put it in brackets or if you could use that little slash and put your keyword in a title, definitely do that. And when you have your subscription, make, make, make I mean not subscription, your description in the description section of your video. Make sure you put your URL. So I have a question. Do you have to type keywords all together? This is what I mean. I would put it that way in your file name. Definitely don't put it that way in your title, okay? And definitely don't put it that way in your description. But in your file name, I would definitely put it that way. I would put the keyword without, and, and what I mean is, because you guys can't see this, it means with no dashes or no spaces. I would definitely do that for the file name. But when you're putting it in your title, don't do it that way. When you're putting it in your description, don't do it that way. And in a description section, you can, um, you, you know, you have a lot of characters. So you can put a long description. And you want to stuff it with your keywords in your description. You can also use timestamps. Timestamps are, you know, like at 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 point at minute five oh two. This is when I'm gonna tell you how to lose an extra ten pounds. At minute seven oh five, this is when I'm gonna tell you the best ways you can lose weight. You know, so that's that's how you use your timestamps in um, YouTube, but also you want to make sure you're using great call to actions, you want to tell people to go to your website, you want to tell people all of the other ways that they can connect with you, you want to utilize all of your social media contacts. So in your experience and expertise, how much time would you suggest you spend on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube daily to really maximize success? That is an excellent question, Michelle, and this is what I would tell you. Pick one. Pick one and master it first, and then branch out into the other ones. But pick one. But definitely repurpose and reuse your content. So basically, in, in, in my area of business, Facebook is my main thing, right? I like to keep the main thing the main thing. But what I would generally do is if I have a video, I'm not going to cut a video and just post it on Facebook. Mm -mm. I'm going to take that video and use it on my other social media sites. But that's when, when you get a little bit more revenue coming into your business, those are some of the things that you can hire a virtual assistant to do. You can hire a VA to take all of your content and repurpose it and reuse it on all of these other social media sites so that you don't have to spend all your time doing that. So create a strong presence on one site and then go and play on the other sites. Now I have to tell you that one of the things that I have done because I'm re- um, repositioning my network for women in business over the past five years I've done a ton of training videos interviews and all of that stuff and I'm releasing all of that content on my YouTube page so I definitely would encourage you to follow me on YouTube so all of the content and a lot of, a lot of you guys have content have a ton of content just sitting there waiting for you to use it you probably have articles that you've written blog posts that you've written, you've probably done calls on freeconferencecall.com. Let me tell you, some of you probably could go to your freeconferencecall.com and see a ton of calls. Do you know at freeconferencecall.com that you could download those MP3s and then you can take those MP3s, right? Say, for instance, you, inter you had somebody real cool on your, on your conference call, right? You could go download that MP3 and then create a thumbnail with 
you know, a picture of that person that you had on the call and upload that on YouTube. And a person can just go to YouTube and just listen. And all that they will see is that one um, picture. And then the MP3 will just play and they will see that one picture. So you don't have to just load videos. You can load some of your audios with a good thumbnail and people can just listen. I can't tell you how many times I've gone to YouTube and just listen to someone interview someone. You know, so it, it's, it's, let me tell you something. It's, it's, there's so much that you can do. And so many of us are just kind of like, you know, I don't want you guys to become a, on analysis paralysis as it relates to this. I want you guys to pick a platform and build it first. And then just, just, you know, have a presence on those other platforms. And before you know it, just having a presence will allow you to build very naturally and organically. But pick a platform. Don't get yourself really burdened down, okay? And then there's a, um, you know, TubeBuddy can help you with getting your videos ranked. And then you can live stream. That's another thing you can do. And then you can run ads and monetize. So if you want your YouTube channel to get monetized really fast, just throw up the video, run an ad, and let it get like it it could get to probably ten thousand views in about a week. Okay? So those are some of the things that you can get your videos noticed. And definitely the way that you will generate leads is you're gonna have your links to all your lead capture pages and everything right in the description box. That's gonna be the first thing that you want people to see. So do you guys have any questions about the information that I just went over tonight? Any questions? You guys are still hanging in with me. I love it. Thank you so much. So basically, I do have a special offer for you guys tonight. And what I want to do is offer you the opportunity to get this special extra special training that I just put together. And I'm going to put the... URL leadgeneration101.net is what I'm calling it. And you have the opportunity to get it tonight for only $47. And the price is going to go up. But this is what's going to happen when you get it. When you get it, it's going to say when you sign up for the, for the course, it's going to say thank you for your purchase. And you're going to see this green button that's going to allow you to access the purchase, right? But now what I want to show you is what you're going to see once you, once you purchase it, okay? Because I want to show you what I actually set up. So it's going to take you to this. Um, first, you're going to go to a page where you can set up your account. But what it's going to do is it's going to take you to this back office section. Now, what I've done is I have taken all the information that I taught over the weekend and plus some, and I've loaded it into this membership site for this course. And so basically when you get the course, you're going to see the welcome video, and then you're going to see all of these other videos. So under AWeber training, you're going to see the video that will teach you how to set up your AWeber account and how to create your own sign-up form. Under your ClickFunnels training, you're going to see a video that's going to show you how to actually set up your ClickFunnels account, and you can take the free trial for all of this. It's going to show you how to create your lead capture pages, how to connect it with AWeber, and how you can get started creating a professional lead capture page with ClickFunnels. And then under Facebook marketing, I have how to set up your fan page. I have a video for that. I have a video on how to set up your Facebook ads and how to set up your pixels. I have a video on how to create Facebook long posts. I have a video about what's working now on Facebook, on Instagram marketing. I have a full video on Instagram marketing and how you can be successful with that. YouTube marketing, I show you how to actually create a video ad, right? 
on YouTube and then I show you some YouTube marketing basics, right? Canva. Canva is the software that I talked to you about that shows you how to create really beautiful social media posts. So I give you training on that. I also show you how to use this um, online video converter tool. So basically when you click here, I show you how to take videos from YouTube. So if your network marketing company has a video and you want to use it in your lead pages, I show you how you can take those videos from YouTube and download them on your computer and then you can upload them in your lead capture page. And then here I have a resource list where I give you all, you know, I show you how to get access to all of the resources, right? To Buddy, Curated Response, all of that. And then um, Hootsuite is a platform that allows you to do all your social media posts off of, across a bunch of different platforms. Post Planner is another one. I also have a link for a URL rotator. So if you buy solo ads, which I show you um, two really great places to buy solo ads for, with Clickonomy, you could buy solo ads not just for network marketing but for any business. And then MLM Gateway, you can you can. Um, buy ads there and you can use a URL rotator because if your team members of a group of you guys want to go in together and buy ads you can use this piece of this tool right here that will allow the ad you can you know it will allow you to send the ad to one URL but what the URL rotator will do it'll as soon as one person clicks on one link it'll pull up another link then it'll pull up another link. So it'll rotate the links so that if you guys buy a solo ad together, you know, one person will get a lead, then another person will get a lead, then another person will get a lead, and it'll work like that. And so then also on top of that, you can become an affiliate for this course, right? Right now the course is $47. You can use this link to sign up for it as an affiliate and you can sell the course to other people and you will earn $14 on a $47 sale and when I raise the price to 67 bucks, which this is a whole lot of content is worth way more than that, but I believe in putting the information out and making it reasonable for people to get access to it. So the regular price is going to be 67 and you'll be able to become an affiliate and send this out to other people. If you like the way I train, if you like my style and you want to spread the word, you can share in the sale. I will definitely, and what's really cool about my affiliate program is that I have instant payout. So when you send it out and somebody else signs up, right? What happens is, so on a $67 um, payout, you will instantly get the $20. $20 will go to you and $47 will go to me. For the $47, the $14 goes instantly to you and the remainder goes to me. So it's instant payout so you don't have to wait for your money and I really love that. And then I also have a bonus section. And in the bonus section, I put a couple of bonus videos. So I have a video on blogging and Facebook and that's in here. And then also I have um, a couple of ebooks, How to Reach Your Personal Best in 2017, and also The Productive Entrepreneur. And I think that these two ebooks are, are really truly awesome and you can download them. So this is what you're going to get access to and I think that it's probably one of the best courses that I put together. I put a lot of information in it. You can go step by step using the videos and you know like I said if you want to be an affiliate you can go in and you know sign up to become an affiliate and for 47 bucks it's, it's just really a great and awesome price. So in order to get access to that, all you have to do is go to leadgeneration101.net and that will give you access to that. But I'm going to pause for a minute. Kevin says, count me in. How long would access be for? For life.
for life. I don't plan on taking this course down anytime soon. I plan on having it up there and I actually am planning on putting it on a couple of um, other affiliate platforms like JVZoo and um, also uh, the other one just it's right clickbank clickbank and jv zoo so i plan on having this um this course out here for a long time and i want to do the introductory price at 47 and then um i will do the regular price at 67 and once you buy it and you get access for access to it i don't plan on on changing anything if anything with this one i plan on um probably adding more so like the video from tonight will be added to this course as soon as the video renders. So tomorrow it's going to be added, but it's also going to be added to the um, the website that I have listed, uh, the Tony Coleman Brown forward slash inspire tools. That website, it'll the replay will be listed there. And I, I will email the replay out to everybody that signed up for the replay. So you will have this training. But this particular training, the Lead Generation 101, it's a great price. It's a great deal. You get a lot for the money. It's worth it. And if, like I said, if you like my style, you like how I train, and you want to spread the word, definitely become an affiliate. And I would love to share in a sale with you. So do you guys have any other questions? And I said that we were going to be two hours and we were exactly two hours and you guys hung in with, in there with me, uh, quite a few of you for the whole entire two hours. So I really appreciate that. But um, if you have any questions, like I said before, you guys can always send me a friend request. You can reach out to me via messenger. You can send me an email at tonycolemanbrown at gmail.com. I'm really accessible. I'm, you know, I think that I'm probably one of the few people who may even have their real phone number on Facebook. You know, believe that. And I, and I haven't had any problems, so I'm, I'm really thankful for that. But um, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to, okay, how do we get the special offer for lead generation? All you have to do is I put the link in the chat area. I'm going to type it again. It's www.leadgeneration101.net. And so um, I put it in again, and that's how you can get access to that. All right, and you know, one of the things that I talked about is ClickFunnels, and I use ClickFunnels to actually build this out so you guys can see how powerful ClickFunnels is. So I wanted to say once again, do you guys have, if you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me. So with this particular course, like I said, I think I'm going to add to it. It's, it's, it's the latest and greatest. It's, it's up to date and, you know, like in some of the courses I've done in the past, you know, one of the things that happens often is platforms change, they don't look the same and, you know, you can't sell those courses because you're selling old and outdated information. But this is really up to date and it's new and it's hot and it's fresh. So, um, and it's a good value. It's not like $500 or $1,000 or anything like that. So it's great value. And I wanted to price it at a way, like I said, that everybody could get access to it. So once again, if you guys don't have any questions, I'm getting a lot of the comments like, got it, got it. Thank you, Tony. Um, it's incredible value. Thank you so much. You are awesome. Thank you, Naomi, for saying that. Um, and thank you guys for allowing me the time to pour into you. I do not take it lightly, but as most of you can see, this is something that I'm 110% passionate about. And uh, I appreciate having each and every one of you here on the webinar tonight. And uh, thanks, Sophia. Sophia said that was amazing. Um, thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You guys take care. Have a great and blessed night. 
um, take the link. I will be emailing the information out as well in the follow-up email. Once the video has rendered, I will be sending you guys all the links via email, all of the people that registered, and um, you know, you'll have an opportunity definitely to take part. So thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of the night. Thank you for the positive comments. And the webinar now is officially over. Take care, everybody.